All right then gang, so we're pretty much done with this project now, but there is just a handful of small things I want to do with it before we end the chapter. First of all, I want to show the number of turns on the screen so a user can see that as they play. Now right now we're tracking that number and it gets updated every turn by adding one to it in the reset turn function, but we then don't do anything with that. So I want to show it on the screen. Then I want to reset the choices when we start a new game, when the cards are shuffled, because at the minute a user could select one card, then hit new game, but that card would still technically be choice one. So finally, after we've done that, I want to start the game automatically for a user when they first land on the page. At the minute, they have to manually hit new game to start it and see the cards. So first of all then, I want to output the number of turns on the page and we are tracking the number of turns right here. So we just need to output this bit of state. So at the bottom of the template, I'm going to output the number of turns in a paragraph tag below the card grid and I'll say turns colon and then output the turns state. Awesome. So next up, I want to start the game automatically. So to do this, I'll be using another use effect function which is going to fire a function when the component first loads. So when it's first evaluated or when a user first lands on the website. Now you'll notice I have this use effect and also this use effect right here. So we have two use effect hooks and that's absolutely fine. You can do if you want to, if you've got different side effects for a component. Think about it. I wouldn't want to start the game automatically inside this hook because this hook fires a function right here every time choice one and choice two is changed. Now, if we placed the game starting automatically inside this hook, then every time we make a choice, it's going to restart the game and we don't want that. So we're going to do it down here. And all we need to do is call the shuffle cards function because that is the function that technically starts the game. If we take a look up here, our cards initially are an empty array, which is why we don't see them to begin with on the screen. But as soon as we call this function, we create that card array and we sort it, or rather we randomize it, we map it to a new array and then we update the cards right here. So as soon as we have cards, that's when we start to output them in the template right here. So by calling this when the component first mounts, we are technically starting the game and showing the cards. All right, so finally, what I want to do is when we start a new game, I want to reset choice one and choice two, just in case they still had one selected. So let's do that down here. I'm going to say set choice one, and that's going to be null. And then I'm going to do the same thing for choice two this time. And then that should be it. All right, then. So now if we refresh, we see the cards automatically it starts the game for us. And we can see the number of turns down here as well. And that's going to increase as we start to make selections. So notice now it's turn one. And if we do another, we've had two turns. And if we do another, we've had three, etc. And also, if we start a new game, if we have one selected, watch this, new game. First of all, the turns goes back to zero. And now we can select two more because we reset that selected card. Awesome. All right then, my friends. So I really, really hope you enjoy creating that project with React. Like I said before, this was a free chapter from my full React course on Udemy. So if you want to learn more about React and create even more awesome projects with it, definitely check out my full React course on Udemy, Build Web Apps with React and Firebase. And we use Firebase in our React applications right here so that we can use things like an authentication service, a real-time database, and file uploads as well. So I'll leave a link to this course in the video description down below. And when you use that link, it will have a promo code automatically applied to it so you can get it for the discounted price. Now, like I said, loads more content in this course. I talk about hooks in more detail, creating custom hooks, the context API, reducers, as well as loads of Firebase features like authentication, file uploads, and a real-time database as well. So again, I really hope you enjoyed this project that we've created. If you did, please leave a like. That really means a lot. And hopefully I'll see you all over on Udemy for this course as well.